the fascist response to society's problems has very often featured what is called a strong man. The way this game is played out politically is that the society, as it begins to crumble, and we're talking about capitalist societies, whether in the 1920s and 30s in Germany or Italy or Japan or any of the other countries which had this kind of problem, when capitalism begins to unravel, to fall apart, one of the responses, understandably, is for someone to step up and say, well, the society's falling apart, the traditional political parties are not being able to function or they're not saving the situation, so here I am, the strong man who will lead us out of all of this trouble. So let's go through the current crop of strong men. You all remember the old crop, the Mussolini, the Hitler, etc. Well, today we have... In Hungary, Viktor Orban. In the United States, Donald Trump. In Brazil, Jair Bolsonaro. I could go on, but you get the picture. They're popping up all over the place. In France, you don't yet see them in power, but you see them running political parties. Marina Le Pen in the National Front Organization. In Germany, there's a political party that has zoomed into prominence called the Alternative for Germany, Alternative für Deutschland. And again, you can see in Spanish politics, you can see in the government of Italy, and so on, the emergence of strong, popular leaders like Mr. Trump, who's going to sort it all out. First throw away the old Republicans, then throw away the old Democrats, and he's going to do it all. But beyond that political game, there is something very serious going on. Whenever capitalism has crashed, suffered not just another economic downturn, they have that in capitalism every four to seven years, but a real big one where millions of people lose their job, not for six months, not for 18 months, but for years on end. Whenever that has happened, you begin to see anxiety. And you see two kinds of anxiety. One, we have to do something to save capitalism. It's in mortal danger. That's one reaction. That's where fascism lies. But there's also another reaction. There's the reaction of capitalism is irreparably broken and we need to go to a different, better system. So the solution isn't save capitalism, but go beyond it. Take society to a new and different system that doesn't crash like this capitalism just has. Sometimes both of these movements get lumped together under names like populism. That's the popular one this time. The idea being people are scared, people are worried, people are looking for new directions, people are angry about what's happening to the mass of people from this crumbling economic system. So you can lump them all together. But lumping them is itself a political act an ideological act, because they are fundamentally different. Saving the system through a strong man who can carry us through is a very different political project from saying goodbye to capitalism and moving on to one or another alternative. So we have names over time. The name for the effort to hold on to capitalism, to keep it going, in a new way, with a strong man, that's called fascism. The effort to go beyond a broken capitalism usually goes by the name socialism or communism. And as I'll point out, these two alternative reactions to crashes of capitalism usually hate each other, struggle tremendously against each other, and have often been very, very unkind, as I will explain.